You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. As you may know, Marcy's household has an animal menagerie that grows in strange, sudden, and unexpected ways. Also, the Weekly World News confirms that you are not fat. What are your morning chores? Well, first I feed the fish and the frogs in the aquarium. They're the priority? With, well, they are right now because Jonah Hill is pregnant. Jonah Hill is a frog or a fish? Yes. F- Jonah Hill is a frog. We have Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum. And uh, Jonah Hill's always been a little chunky, but uh, now he's super chunky. So I think Jonah Hill is non binary, it's a he she, and uh, he's super pregnant. So I feed them first. Then I feed three dogs and mix pumpkin in all of their foods. Where did they even learn to eat pumpkin? I didn't teach them or give them a book to read. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I can't can't imagine you having pumpkin in your house for any reason at all. I learned that when I volunteered for a shelter. And uh, every morning they would mix pumpkin into the dog's foods because it has like vitamins and stuff that's really good for them. I have a question. Yeah. How do you know that they weren't just stretching it like people put oatmeal in ground beef? I mean, how do you know that this rescue wasn't like, what's the cheapest thing we can give these animals to make them feel full pumpkin? Because nobody eats it except at (laughs) one time of the year at Thanksgiving and the rest of the time it sits and gathers dust on your pantry shelf. I asked Jives. (laughs) What? You remember Ask Jive? Oh, Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Jeeves, whatever. Oh, you're such a rock and roller. See, I can't even remember Ask his name. Jives. Jives. The, the headquarters of Ask Jeeves was in Oakland, and it had a big yeah. sign over their building by the freeway. And it was like a family joke to come up with some esoteric question every time we passed Jeeves. So anyway, I feed the three dogs. Then I go out and feed the goats and make sure that they have water in all their various watering stations out here and, and there. take out the mice, the area. dead mice, the drowned mice. No, I, I actually put a stick in there. So it that does they work. Climb out. Okay, works. I haven't found any since that stick went in there. I See, I'm kind of surprised. I would think they would be like, whoa, Carnival Cruise Line. Look, we've got an on-deck pool. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then here's the part that you're not going to like. Uh-oh. Then I go out to the workshop, and I feed the four cats out there. Mm -hmm. That used to be three cats that went down to two cats and then suddenly swelled to four. Wait a minute. I knew you got one more. I brought home another 20-year-old cat (laughs) to try and be friends with Blatto. How's that going? Um, Well, not well. Oh. So (laughs) I was going to trade her out. We gave her a week. Trade her out. Going to trade her out. So brought home another cat that's five years old. And Frankie said, the upshot is that Buddy, the cat with one eye and no teeth, fell in love with the, with the fourth cat. So I said, okay, well, we're taking cat number three back. Who'd only been here for a week. And Frankie said, no, I love her. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so she's well, Frankie's cat now. This is ammunition for a long time, though. You can use it this. It sure is. This can, you can use this. I was this willing to take... See, this is the thing. Stuff that's... Re- there are things that are really bad that ter- that are really useful. Like, I, I really enjoy it when a play, for example, is not bad. Yep. I like it when it's horrible. They put that's this... pretty much what this is, too. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> okay, well, there you go. So... Mr. No More Cats. This is good. Whenever something is not not just bad, it's truly awful, it becomes material. And I, and I say this because right now I'm in the middle of a bunch of stuff that's truly awful. And one of my yeah. girlfriends said, okay, well, there's a play. And I thought, that's what you do with truly awful. You put it out in the world as entertainment. That's what you do with truly awful. Or you use it in your marriage as ammunition. Those are the two things that truly awful will get you. This is my ammo. Yeah. Yeah, I think there couples find ways. But have you ever had to deliver a, a talk to your child or children about 
okay, this is how the other adult in this house does things, but you're never to do things this way? Oh, hell yeah. Can you give me a list? Uh, probably not. Okay. But let's say it starts with language. Oh, that's that's a good one. In I my am married. He constantly reminds me that he's a construction worker, and that's how they talk. I and I have to constantly remind him that this is not your work site. I had to deliver an, a sermonette. If it had been a longer drive, it would have been a full-on sermon. But, you know, when you're driving, this is when the kids talk to you or you talk to the kids, right? Right. So I had to deliver. I can't escape. That's right. It's also kind of a truth serum. I don't know quite how it works exactly. If you want to know what they're really thinking, it used to be you just put them in the back seat with their friends and listened. And now you can put them in the seat next to you and actually ask them questions and sometimes get an answer, uh, which you file away as, altogether now, ammo. So... <laughs> so I don't know do you always want those answers though very often no no I don't yeah see that's my problem with the inquisition is that a lot of times I want to roll that back I wish I'd wish never I heard back. it yeah curving around to the original premise here which is that this is when yes. I deliver the sermonette I actually found myself delivering a sermonette about the spousal unit and time because, as you know, the spousal unit is extremely time-challenged. Yes. And unfortunately, the world of technology has made my life even more difficult when it comes to living with a time-challenged person. Because he does things like show me his phone and say, oh, it only is going to take us blank amount of time to get to such and such a place. <laughs> and I'm like, the place is 45 minutes away, and it takes two major highways, and all that has to happen is that somebody gets a flat tire, and then we're half an hour late. Or a truck. Or a rack or anything yeah, else. Yeah, anything. So, you know, this whole planet to the minute has made me literally miss a plane before. I, and, and this last time when the small person was supposed to pick us up from the airport, despite the sermonette, he did what his parent has taught him to do. He looked at his phone. And so he was an hour and 15 minutes late to pick us up. Here, that it's ammo. It's all ammunition. Yeah. This is ammunition, and I save it, and I hoard it, and by golly, I will use it. <laughs> use it forever. Yes. So here's the deal. You know, when he wants Phones to figure are out. are liars. Well, phone, it's, it's not that the phone is a liar. It's that the phone is right for that moment in time. But again, the time challenge. So I'm hoping, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that whatever job he blows up won't be the job of his dreams. Because the only way oh. he's going to learn this is the hard way. Yep. That's it. Sometimes you just know it's going to be the hard way. Well, yes. I learned the hard way that my husband, <laughs> my curmudgeonly husband who hates every animal on the property, actually loves them. And for, I think, the first time in years, actually chose one himself. So there's my ammo, the one little cat in the workshop that belongs to Frankie is my ammo yeah. now when I need to add something like, I don't know, a horse. No. Bysdale. No. A mule. No. A donkey. No, no. You got this wrong. No. Oh, no, that's right. Horses are like yachts on land. Well, not if you buy a good one. Buy? Oh, I thought it was adopt. Oh, now it's buy. Well, would you like me to show you the Facebook pages of my two friends who've lost horses lately and that and what they put into it before it was the end? Oh, I believe me, I worked my way through college at a ranch. So I know. Yeah, no, no, you don't, because that was a long time ago. Remember the lecture you gave me about how nobody used to brush their dog's teeth? Yes. Yeah. I just saw a Facebook post from the daughter of a famous politician, and she just had her dog at UC Davis Big Vet School for a first time ever pioneering surgery that's only been done on dogs before. Any guesses on how much that's going to cost? <laughs> Probably more than all five of my hand and wrist surgeries. Probably. And you could sell your house and still not pay for it. Ugh. Yeah, no, no, I know. I'm, no. I'm kidding about the horse. No good, because I was worried there for a minute. 
you know, because horse, horse baddies draw lots of flies. Well, there's that. And we're up here. We're in a constant battle of flies because it's so arid. Right now, we're fighting them in Eve's backyard because she has the most concentration of trees. So back behind Eve's house is where the snow stays until like mid June. And <laughs> for some reason, all that draws flies. You didn't check to see if that was like a dead animal under there? Because that'd be my thought. Dead animal equals flies. Actually, um, no, nah, they'd if rather it just. Died a natural death out there. Something died a natural death. Some possum or raccoon or whatever your mountain version of it is. One of these animals would have found it, believe me. You think? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I am changing the subject. So ever since I retired, which was I don't even know how many years ago because. Because you're not really retired. Right. And I don't really do math. I have supplemental health insurance that I pay like 30 bucks a month for. Uh And it's supposed to cover anything that uh, the government Medicare doesn't cover. So ever since then, which would be, let's see, how old am I now? Okay. Last five years, every single, (laughs) every single week, my supplementary insurance, I get a phone call and they want me to set up a home visit. And Why? I, I don't know, but I never answer the phone. Do you think someone is always, impersonating you? No, no, it's something that they offer and they want people to use it. But I don't think they realize where I live when they're offering this. Well, if you want and them that, to stop calling, why don't you make an appointment and let them come visit and then you'll be off their list forever? I did yesterday, finally, because they offered me a $50 Visa gift card. (laughs) Aha, that's what it took, huh? Come on to my house. For 50 bucks, you can see Marcy's house. Great. Well, all they want to do is, like, take your blood, you know, check your blood pressure. uh, Tell you to stop smoking. Yeah, which I am. Eve and I are quitting. Yeah, well, I don't believe that. I've done this before, you know. Yeah, that's why I don't believe (laughs) Do you realize what that sounds like? We have set a date. Okay. But yes, I'm letting some weirdo rando doctor come to my house and take my blood pressure and tell me to quit smoking or whatever he's going to tell me to do. Okay. And they can't they can't do prescriptions. They don't take the place of a regular doctor. Well, is it a I'm doctor? Really not... Is it a doctor? Mm-hmm. They just play one on TV. It's a regular doctor. But they said you still have to go to your regular doctor visits. And I'm still like, what's the point? But then I figure, okay, I'm going to make 50 bucks in a half hour. They're going to be so sorry. And he's going to be so traumatized (laughs) by the time he finds this. You're going to let the goats jump on him? (laughs) Goats, dogs, cats, pregnant Jonah Hill (laughs) from the Fish Aquarium. Here, you want to hold some baby frogs? (laughs) Um, You know what? I read, though. Now I don't know what to do because I am going to have to Google this. I read that these little frogs will, like, eat their young. I was just going to ask you that question. So I'm not really sure how to separate them. You watch them like guppies, and the minute they... It's not like they're going to nurse the frogs. They're not mammals. And as soon as the little frogs are born, you either take the grown-ups out or you try to find all these little babies, which you cannot possibly do. No, I can't because they're, like, minuscule. So you have to take the frogs out, and you have to get yourself a big magnifying glass so that you'll know the second that Jonah Hill (laughs) delivers... They're yeah, their babies. That's going to happen. Sure. Yeah. Well, then, just... then then, you can back off the food for a couple of days while Jonah Hill <laughs> eats his own. Their own. There you go. There you go. What a savings. It is. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe the fish will eat them. They would. I don't yes, know. Yes, they will. Yes. It just brings up. It brings back nightmares when Eve and I were convinced that one of the goats was pregnant. And for three weeks, we set alarms and got up every single two hours every day for two, three, four, five. I don't know. You find out there was was. just gas from the pumpkin? The the goat was just fat. (laughs) But we were convinced. I had that happen to me when I had had the children. (laughs) I was walking around with, you know, like a six week old baby, and people are going, Oh, when are you expecting? I'm like, How would I be expecting with this six week old baby? Yeah, no, we waited and a waited. Miracle of science. This. It's a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Finally, when it was twice the time of a goat's gestational period. That's when you we figured out the vet out. 
No, that said, your goat's too fat. Quit feeding her so much. There you go. Every once in a while, you hear about these women in other countries, of course. Of course, never here. Because this is this is weekly world news. I was just <laughs> gonna say this is the weekly world news, which which travels the world to bring you these stories. Eighty-year-old grandma gives birth to triplets, and one of them is Elvis. Yeah, exactly. If you've made it this far, chances are you've been enjoying Tory Writers. She said, "What podcast?" In which case, you might also like my book. She said, what? A life on the air. You can find that at your neighborhood independent bookstore or on Amazon. Marcy and I really appreciate your good reviews wherever you care to leave them. Your kind words help the podcast grow. Thanks.